Here we find ourselves at a point where the world has ex exponentially grown and you're watching it today. And so let's go back 5,000 years where there wasn't really technology and there wasn't a lot of consciousness. It was very dense. Even Yeshua basically says, I did the most I could do, but the density was so dense that I could only do that much. But then he says, what I did, you will do more of than I did. And, and now we're coming into that statement in, in a lot of ways. So as you watch technology, you watch culture, you watch this growth unfolding, you've begun to see, especially right now, these different points of view that bring light into the heart. The construct that people count, Black Lives Matter. There are people that are important. We should be co-creating. So the construct of the game of the fifth dimension is really very much about co-creating, well-being, joy, laughter, constructively putting things together in the light of the creator. And so we're, we had a point in time where you watched all through the 1700s and the 1800s, things kept getting more expansive. Into the 1900s, you had World War I, World War II, and then you, you began to find something happened very quickly. There was a whole level of massive growth. Now, not good or bad, just massive growth and awareness and education and choices began to be made available. And it was very much in the light that was coming into consciousness, into the hearts of humanity. So there was a point in 1987 called the Harmonic Convergence. And the Harmonic Convergence was a simple question to humanity. We're at a particular point. We've been here before. In the last five times that we've been here, six times we've been here, the choice was we can't get to where we want to go. So we're going to self-destruct the game, not destroy it. We're just going to go away and come back with a different approach. And so this time the question was asked and it didn't need 51% of the planet. It just needed a level of very defined consciousness that basically said, let's go for it. And there were enough beings on the planet that said, let's go for it. And so in that instant in 1987, you were changed. I mean, you were changed. What you think your past is, as you basically define your past, some of it is correct in your awareness. A whole lot of it is new awareness that didn't even really happen. It's not that you were controlled. It was just that you were given a new framework to begin to play with kind of a new operating system, if you would. That began to accelerate very quickly and there were changes that were made. It's like the light began to come into consciousness and you watched it in growing really very much in the 60s when you had all of the movements in the 60s, the, the women's movement, the environmental movement, the anti-war movements, all of that all over the world was the waking up to be able to uh, approach that question. And those that were playing at that time said, let's go for it. So you had some interesting changes in 1992, 1994. The first big one came in what was defined as Y2K, 2000, the change of the, um, the century. And then project from 2000 every year moving forward, to 2011, there was these levels of light, this consciousness that was coming into the game. And in 2011, something really specifically happened. And in the context of um, really all the religions, it says that there's going to be light brought into consciousness. But in the context of the Christian religion, not making that good or bad or right or wrong, that space where Yeshua, Yeshua not being in this case uh, an aspect of church 
particularly the Christian church. So I'm not making him a Christian representation. I'm not validating the church or invalidating the church. But Yeshua basically said there'll be a point where the light of the source will return. The love of the creator will come back to the planet. Now the church has said Jesus will return. That's not what he says. And he says it all the time in conversations that we have. And basically in 2011, the aspect of love, the aspect of source, that part of source called love was brought back to the planet opened the heart of every being on the planet. And then 2012 was the piece that that actually set in mo 2011 set in motion. And what effectively happened was the operating system. Think about of a computer, you know, you get all this new software and all these new opportunities and all this new uh, fast processing that comes into being, but your hardware is old. And the hardware doesn't support the new software. So in 2012, effectively, there was a new operating system brought into humanity. And that operating system basically allowed for a massive expansion of love and light to be brought into consciousness. And you've watched this whole technological as well as conscious evolution. Now, Many people will go, what are you talking about? I mean, we've got more wars. We've got more authoritative governments. We've got more poverty. We've got more them versus us. We've got 1% having all the money and everybody else having to be in some level of survival. What's really happening is that's all be becoming very conscious. Much of that's always been here, but it's been unconscious. And so you're watching the world become conscious. And then it moved into slowly, or at least in a way it wasn't quite obvious, 2013, 14, 15. And about 2016, that whole state of authoritative backlash began to come into the mix. Basically, what you were watching is those who could not have the love of the creator that were arguing for their limitations, for their status quo, for their lack, for their need to have everything they had nicely put in place, they're still arguing for it. And so it's me against you is that whole argument that you're watching in the world right now. And yet that light is expanding and you're watching changes come about extremely rapidly right now. And then in 2019, you had a massive shift of consciousness occur and it was coronavirus. And many people died, that's tragic on one hand, but basically what happened is that vibrational field of light interrupted everything related to how it has always been. And so now the world's repositioning itself to kind of move into another position. So you're going to watch these next couple of years be on one hand, phenomenal in terms of what begins to be presented to make a healthier world come into being. And at the same time, you're going to watch those that are arguing for their limitations get very loud. You're going to very likely see different wars. You're going to see different banking failures. You're going to see different shifts in economies. But at the same time, there's an underlying light that is evolving in the hearts of every human being on the planet. So, so the process of how do we solve this kind of misaligned game that was created, wasn't created intentionally. It was just like, okay, this is what we created. And now we've got to figure out how this isn't quite working. There's another part of the story we'll do maybe another time, which is, well, what wasn't working about it? And how did all of the great beings say, wow, isn't this a phenomenal game? We've never seen something called separation, duality, them versus us, right and wrong. There was never a creation. See, because everything up until the fourth dimension was love. 
and light and joy. And I'd like an apple and the apple appeared. There was no doubt or hesitation about the apple appearing. So we're unraveling out of this space and it's really pretty amazing where it's going. I'll make one last comment. There were 12 planets in all that is, and they were special. Uh, special, that's not the right phrase. They were unique though. They had the love of the creator applied in certain ways that they were planets of love. And when that wobble began, the mutations, the distortions began, one of those 12 planets began to be very affected by the wobble. And it was this planet. And this planet fell out of love. Now, just kind of hear that lightly. It basically lost its ability to manage its own space. One of the primary reasons is humanity dropped into that fourth dimensional space. Fourth dimension is a thought realm. And one of the things about thoughts, do you ever ask yourself, where did that thought I just thought go when I was done thinking that thought? It goes somewhere. It doesn't just poof into the air and gone. So one of the things about the earth is the emotional body of the earth is the fourth dimension. All the thoughts ever thought are surrounding the earth in terms of its emotional field. So when I say the earth fell, anger, rage, resentment, jealousy, war, hate, incest, rape, domination, competition, advantage over, just simply took over in that last iteration of such a way that basically the earth lost love. The elementals lost love. That's a story all by itself. And so what's being asked right now to humanity is, can you find love? Can you find the light that basically says, how do I bring this light back? extraordinarily successful. We've already been successful. The game is complete. We've, we are all going home, but it's this wrap up period, this transition period, this period that everybody has to recognize that they are aspects of the light of source and putting themselves back into the light of source is simply going to change the game completely. There's so much more to this, but basically that's how the Archangelics describe the fall of consciousness.